Welcome to Canada's podcast, the number one podcast for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. Hello, and welcome to Edmonton's podcast on Canada's Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mario Taniguzzi. Joining me today is Giselle Denis, who is a performance painter at the Fairmont Hotel McDonald in Edmonton and at the Raffles Hotel in Dubai. Thanks for joining us today, Giselle. Thank you for having me. Okay, tell me, what is a performance painter? Yes, well, I developed a style of painting over the years, um, mostly just uh, when I would showcase my work publicly, uh, standing around twiddling my thumbs while people looked at the paintings and answered questions. I thought, why don't I um, add an element of interest to my space um, to not only look at the art, but watch it be created. So. My process was already fairly quick. When I make a painting, it's like having a conversation. Oh, my cat joined me. That's fine. (laughs) Having a conversation with a painting. Um, So think of it as you're having coffee with a friend and it's, you know, hour and a half, two hours. I like to create a whole painting in one session, regardless of how big it is. I like to have this sort of round off the edges and finish it in one session. So I had been doing that for a while already, naturally, my process being fairly quick. And I discovered, or I was discovered um, from the Fairmont Hotel to um, showcase my work in the hotel. And so I proposed to be their live painter. It turned into that about a year after I proposed it to them. And so when I create my paintings, it means from start to finish, I'll work on like a five foot wide canvas um you'll see the whole painting come to life over dinner basically and so it kind of gives you an interesting element to your evening of someone best described it as it's quiet yet it's progressive so it's interesting to watch the process sorry you were going to say i was just wondering that where where are the paintings done then um in the hotel i'm going to drop my ringer um so i perform at the hotels generally in the lounge Um, When I go to Dubai, I paint in their huge lobby. And so it's kind of like um, a place where people can sit down, wherever wherever I am, they're sitting down and they're watching, but they're still having conversation. Um, They can watch the progression of the painting being created. And I've been getting a lot of really amazing responses from from live painting. Cool. So now I see uh, in your background there paintings, uh, which I assume they're yours, right? How would you describe what your painting style is and, and uh, the subject material that you do? Well, I've chosen all nature-based work, um, but I like to tell stories while I'm creating the pieces. So it's not just about you know forests and flowers and mountains, and it's not just about what you're seeing, but it's about the story behind what you're seeing. So I use um, that opportunity in sort of the names of my work. And when I'm posting now with the ability online that we have, it's so accessible. Yeah. I tell a story that goes along with the title of the painting. And so it helps people even connect to it even more so, um, whether they were with me watching the process from start to finish on site with me, or if they're reading about it afterwards, they're connecting to the painting on a deeper level. Oh, cool. So um, when did you start doing this? I started, um, well, I started, I started painting a long time ago. I was a teenager, of course. I started quite young. I think I made my first sale when I was about 13, 14 years old. I, my mother taught me realism. So I really kind of got into the, like the real elements of the fundamentals of drawing. And then as I got serious about art, fast forward to when I got married, this has been 17 years now, like a full-time career. I didn't make a respectable adult income until about 10 years into what I was doing, but it took some time and patience, but most of all, here's my other cat, (laughs) love for painting um, is what's kept me moving forward. So I've been live painting at the Fairmont in Edmonton for six and a half years, and I've been painting in Dubai now for uh, four years. So I go there every winter for about a month. So I'm curious, how, uh, how did that uh, Dubai gig uh, uh, come about? Yeah, so because of the Fairmont connection here, I had painted in a number of Fairmonts, um, mostly Western Canada here. And one of our uh, staff moved to Dubai and became the supervisor of operations. So of course, you know, right? So he connected me to everyone there and they invited me and within six months I ended up in Dubai. I go with my family. So generally this time of year, probably mid-February to mid-March, 
I'll go to Dubai for the month, live at the hotel, pay for the guests for about a month. Um, incidentally, this last year, I came home March 24th. We almost got stuck there for oh, four wow. extra months. So a little miracle happened and we got home safely. Um, but yeah, it was a little sketchy last year, but uh, still really enjoyable and nothing like the Middle East, I tell you. Oh, I can imagine. What was your, I'm just curious because uh, I've heard a lot of stories about Dubai. What was your first uh, impression when you were there? Uh, well, of course, the weather, you know, it's just opposite. If it's minus 30 here, it's plus 30 there. Um, I was actually really surprised of how I was embraced by the culture. I was a little nervous, um, you know, just this girl from Canada going, I, had, I knew nothing of the Middle East. But I was really, um, I received such a positive response live painting, like everybody from every culture. It's a stopover city, a travel city mainly. So I was meeting people, not only locals, but people from around the world. And it's been such an interesting opportunity to open up the door of communication with strangers who I may not have been able to speak with, but because the live painting kind of breaks the ice yeah. for a conversation with anybody. And so it was really it was really exciting to see the, the positive response, the way people opened up. I had, you know, conversations with every age group, every cultural group, every religious group. It was really, really, really cool. Now, you know, uh, when I first came across you, uh, right, <laughs> I, uh, I, I don't think I've ever heard of uh, a live painter, a performance painter anywhere. Like, are there others like you out there? I, yeah, so I was actually inspired by a fellow here in Edmonton. His name is Louis Lavois. He was painting at a charity function and I was attending and I had already been a painter and I turned to my husband and I was just like fascinated by watching this man perform and we paint very different type of style, but the fact that he could do that and I turned to my husband and I don't even know what came up came over me, but I said, I want to do that. <laughs> and so it's kind of cool the year the next year at the same event the, the um, organizer said you know Lewis can't do it this year I was wondering if you want to maybe paint at our event and it freaked me right out <laughs> but so I was able to do it for him and then I did it for a number of different charities um, before I was actually doing it for hotels yeah. and um, so it's it's neat how um, just different opportunities come up. Like I was painting for Little Warriors charity, you probably heard of Little Warriors Canada. And I painted for their charity event and my painting raised $50,000. So I get to paint at charity events, people are bidding on the painting, very generous people. Again, at a big function, you know, a couple thousand people and they're bidding high amounts on these paintings. So I decided to start to try and raise a million dollars for charity. So that happened in 2014. And since then, I've been able to help raise with my art um, nearly seven hundred thousand um, dollars painting live for you know charities, which has been wow. another excellent fun thing to do. So, cool. yeah, I, I don't know a lot of artists who are prepared to share their process publicly. You know, the studio experience is quite private and yeah. intimate, and so, but it's never kind of it's never bothered me to sort of perform. Um, I like to sing and stuff too. So being on a sort of stage, um, I quite like that um, side of it. <laughs> and I don't seem to get nervous that much when I'm performing the painting. So you, you can just be yourself and then you just meet people from all over. It's, it's funny because I was, as you were talking, I was thinking also about, you know, uh, you know, some some people thrive on the audience, right? Whether an athlete or a, an actor, maybe, uh, you know, uh, or live performance in theater, et cetera. Uh, you, 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 you gotta get in the zone with the adrenaline because you've got people watching and that's part of it. But then there's other creative uh, aspects of things uh, that I kind of think, wow, oh, this is kind of a little weird, isn't it? Like, I can't imagine, I'm a writer, right? I, I can't imagine doing, you know, writing away on my stories and journalism and having people watching me doing this, right? That, that, uh, <laughs> how was it, was it? To see someone write and then you have your words up on a screen and people can see how you're like rewording things and I'd be fascinated by watching that, so. How, what was it like the very first time you did that? Uh, and I was, as you said, 
Yeah, as you said, it was it's you know you're, it's a mostly an in studio thing that you do on your own in private, etc. But the to first time to have it publicly out there, people like watching exactly what you're doing. I, what was that like? Well, it was kind of nice because I was kind of I was in the room with everyone, and I was kind of part of the reception. So as people are kind of coming in, so at first there's you know three or four people and then 50 to 20 people and then you know turn around and there's 50 people so it was kind of like a nice slow introduction to like what's this going to feel like and it was definitely a little nerve-wracking to begin with but I felt quite comfortable because I thought okay I talked myself down and said you're you are invited to come here and do this they asked you to be here I know what I'm doing I can paint I'm a good painter I know how to do this so you know, what can go wrong? <laughs> so um, I have had some mishaps, like, you know, live painting on TV and my easel hardware fell apart and my entire like display just crashed to the floor a minute and a half before going live. You know, <laughs> things happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other time I was painting live on Facebook. So I've taken my live painting to live streaming these days. Oh, cool. And um, just because of everything being closed and, you know, my cats jump into my palette and like run across the room with paint on there. And it's just, Things happen, but you just kind of have to go. People really kind of love the authenticness of, yeah. you know, and um, went back to when I was painting it publicly, like uh, one of the things that I love so much is the paintings seem to be a lot about people and the stories behind meeting different people. I met some famous people. I have to tell you this one cool story. Do you have time for a cool story? Yeah, yeah for sure, yeah. Uh, I was painting at the Fairmont and that's where a lot of famous people come and stay when they come and perform in the city, but I don't really usually know who's coming and I don't pay that much attention to pop culture. So anyway, <laughs> I'm painting, I'm doing my thing. And um, this man comes and talks to me for like probably close to an hour. He's kind of in and out. He goes to get a drink. He comes back and we're talked about music. We talked about art. He told me how he plays the drums and he paints and we had a lovely talk. <laughs> I had no idea. And then I finally said, so what brings you to Edmonton? Oh, well, I'm a, I'm a musician. I said, well, yeah, so like, who do you play for? You're, where are you playing? He said, I'm playing at Rogers Place. That's our huge stadium. I said, oh, wow. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> who do you play for? He said, oh, I'm the drummer for Def Leppard. Oh my. So Rick Allen, Rick Allen is the drummer. So, and I would never have known. I don't, I know who the band is, but I wouldn't know. But we had a lovely talk. He, you know, was very comfortable talking with me. I'm sure he's got hordes of people who would just like, you know, paparazzi. <laughs> and the fact, so I meet people like that. I've met the full band, The Cult. I've probably met a lot more famous people that I don't even know because I'm in the middle of painting and I'm not really paying that much attention to, I'm not being nervous about anything because I'm kind of, they came to talk to me. So Oh. It's that that part's been really neat to, um, you know, people come up to me and say, do you know who you were talking to? <laughs> I'm like, no, who is that? Okay. And they tell me after. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm curious, if, uh, 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 although he wasn't born in Edmonton, but he's known for Edmonton. I'm just curious, the most, probably the most famous uh, Edmontonian out there was Wayne Gretzky. So, you ever meet him? No, I haven't met Wayne Gretzky. I have met some of the Oilers. Um, I had to paint on TV for an event for the Oilers and most of the wives were there and they were having dinner. And so I got to kind of meet the Edmonton Oilers wives. I met some of the Oilers. I can't even tell you which ones. I'm sorry. Sorry, Edmonton Oilers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's just interesting the way it's kind of broken down the barrier of the stranger barrier, right? And yeah. like nervous barrier. It's like, here's an opportunity to talk to this person who's doing this thing right now. And, and everyone asks me questions and wants to talk to me. I've met some really famous People in Dubai that I wouldn't know who they are, um, but they hang out at this fancy hotel. If you Google the Raffles Hotel in Dubai, it's crazy, beautiful. And the staff will run across the room and do that thing like, do you know who you were talking to? That was the prince of blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, wow. No, I had no idea, of course. So yeah, yeah. it's exciting. I loved, I loved your comment about the authentic thing. And uh, you know, and we were just doing it right now. You know, and you're Two cats showed up. On it, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I'm curious, uh, from a business perspective, uh, do you see like a potential in doing this in other areas? Like, a, you know, like you know, have you thought about that? Uh, expanding that? I don't know. Uh, in a shopping center, for instance, you know, stuff like that. West Edmonton Mall. 
but a hundred percent I've painted in a lot of cool places um yeah it's all about kind of who you know and who invites you and and um I've sent out proposals for things and stuff too but unless they've seen me in action and met me and know me it's kind of hard to cold call like propose what I do because not a lot of people do what I do and they kind of misinterpret it and go oh like what do you want to come in here and face paint like no, <laughs> no. so it's yeah like I'm just kind of I keep putting myself out there and amazing opportunities come my way because it's my job to put myself in front of people at all times so that's why when COVID hit I thought well the hotels are shut down so I'm gonna go live on Facebook now and I'll have like some of my Facebook lives will reach like 20,000 people and it's just like, wow, it's crazy what you can do with social media right now. So yes, of course, I would absolutely love to, when travel opens up again, do more of that. Um, paint, I've painted for a really cool, I got to paint on a, on a $100,000 Lexus for this big design show. So my job was to literally paint this white car with flowers on both sides of it. Oh, wow with a crowd of like 2000 people there and the media is there. And it was like, so stressful. Like I had to finish and it's not something you can practice. Right. No. It's like, <laughs> okay. I remember driving to that event going, Oh wow. I <laughs> don't know what I'm doing. But then I thought again, no, they asked me to come. They know that I can do this. I know I can do this. I'm a great painter. Let's do it. And what's the worst that could happen? You know? So cool. yeah. So tell me, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, uh, your talent is on that creative side of things. Uh, how do you, uh, you know, how do you uh, uh, do the business side of, uh, of what you do? Like, uh, uh, is that a challenge? Uh, because, uh, uh, because you, you know, you're, that one side of the brain is, you know, functioning all the time and the creativity in what you do and, uh, and, uh, so maybe explain a little bit about that, how you kind of juggle both. Sure. Well, yeah, it's definitely a challenge. It took me some time of figuring out, okay, you know, because I've only, I have only ever been the one who sells my work. I have had little tiny mom and pop galleries kind of over the years, but generally not, no galleries have been um, in any <laughs> help in any way in that regard for me. So I thought, well, if they're not going to sell my art, I'm going to figure this out on my own. And so I just got comfortable putting myself out there at any kind of art show I could possibly do, talk about my work, get comfortable only by practice over and over and over again, Yeah. how to talk about my art, how to talk about a price, how to, you know, be consistent with prices, how to slowly raise your prices every year and how to make the sale. So I've read tons of books on making the sale, books on conversation, um, marketing on sales. Like I, I'm kind of a book nerd and a business nerd actually too. So I quite enjoy that side of things. I mean, would I prefer someone else to like actually do the sale, do the transaction, of course. But um, I've learned to just kind of go, you know what? If, if they want the painting, they'll buy it. If not, that's fine. Like yeah. I'm going to pay it anyways. It doesn't, you know, bother me if, you know, it took me, like I said, a good 10 years to build to the point where I could say, okay, I'm making a respectable income now as an adult, but um, I still, I generally always have around 200 paintings for sale at all times. And wow. I just, I paint 450 plus paintings a year and I paint whether I have a sale or not, whether I have a customer or not. I have a lot of customers now and all those years of putting myself out there and constantly um, showcasing and, you know, putting it out in front of people has definitely paid off and I'm hoping that it opens more doors and it, it generates more sales and kind folks like you who say, Hey, that's interesting. <laughs> Let's have her on a podcast. You know, it's one more um, way of um, letting people know who I am and what I do and my vision and all the layers of things that um, of things that I put out there. So thank you. I mean, it's been, it's been a challenge. It's been exciting. It's been like, you know, heartbreaking at, at some points, you know, when you're not selling, yeah. but um, I'm selling more now than I ever have. Uh, but that's just taken me years to build the thing. And I hope, I hope that it only continues that way. Uh, but I treat every single sale as like, so grateful for every penny I make as an artist. And um, yeah, like I feel really super grateful. And I, like I said, I'm painting whether I have a sale or not. <laughs> Super. Well, that was great. I appreciate you joining us today, Giselle. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Mario. Okay, that was Giselle Denis, 
who is a performance painter at the Fairmont Hotel McDonald in Edmonton and at the Raffles Hotel in Dubai. This has been Edmonton's podcast on Canada's Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mario Tonaguzzi. Thanks for joining us today.